same principles uh, safety and accuracy the 27 year old uh, female with significant deformity and they are always challenging one is that dysplastic pedicles narrow pedicles upper thoracic mid thoracic pedicles can be a challenge and here the navigation is of a great help placement becomes very easy because you have uh, identified the exact levels you have identified the exact trajectories and yes of course your uh, oam and navigation helps but the clinical feel is very very important the tactile feedback while placing the screws is also very very important it's not that oam or navigation or robot will help you uh, to do everything well you have to have that clinical judgment while putting this and if you see a lot of time you have uh, very very narrow thin pedicles autonomic classification type 3 4 where you can put screws where you want to and you can actually get very good trajectories uh, these are the couple of examples and if you see this uh, rigid deformity at the end of it was significantly corrected the main thoracic curve was 108 came to around 48 degrees and how will you prefer to find a way when you are lost and that's a that's a question which we always want to understand and nowadays we really believe that the navigation really helps uh, this is everywhere and the world is moving towards it we have to accept that the navigation is going to be the future of spine surgery for sure for safety accuracy and precision uh, we will just uh, show the uh, basic for for all the uh, orthopedic colleagues this is how the warm machine comes it though it's a very uh, bulky looking machine but it's not a c arm it's an intraoperative ct scan and it's a very very uh, dose modulated low density low dose uh, oam navigation and this oam is really quick 13 second scans normally we do the ct scans which are one to two minutes and this scans are equivalent to four to six shoots of mis spine surgery and that's it the oam goes away and still station the navigation uh, starts working and you start looking at the navigation and start putting your screws and that's the beauty uh, in pediatric deformities it's again we if you want to do a early onset scoliosis you can have the tiny pedicles also putting your screws very well very accurate and this is definitely possible with the navigation if you see we have done this deformity correction we use the navigation and put the screws above and below and we use the growth rod And if you see the pre and post operative, there is a significant amount of correction in thoracic and thoracolumbar deformity. And this is what was the pre op. And we are now doing the distraction sequential at around six months for this girl. And if you see the clinical pictures, it's significantly improved in terms of her posture, gait, and walking. Again, a young girl, around seven, eight, seven, eight year old girl, comes to us with very high grade, grade four spondylar dysthesis. And if you see in uh, dynamic x rays, there is a significant, it's almost optosis. And it's a challenging scenario how long you'll fuse. She's a growing child, whether you'll fuse from L3 to S2, L4 to S1, S2, all these things are always. Uh, there in your mind and if you see there are dysplastic uh, vertebrae the dome of sacrum also you can see uh, the uh, sagittal parameters are all disturbed and there is a significant amount of compression at this said level uh, and in this we plan for the distraction technique which we use and these are the we, we, we have done whatever cases so far monoblock we have not gone to L4 or L3 in most of our cases in such high grades as well and we put one screw in the higher level around L3 and we distract and then we uh, put our screw in uh, L5 and again distract you have to do couple of distraction and release maneuvers at the same time very good clearance is required and if you see the trajectories of screws we really get a very good hold in this small tiny kids and this is the last picture 
uh, we are very happy the way uh, it has come up because there is complete posterior decompression of all the routes, the exiting and traversing. At the same time, we could reduce it well. And this girl is walking. Uh, is the video working? Is very comfortably walking any which way. And the adolescent deformities, it, it's, it's a very, very uh, good tool. Apical pedicles especially, we really can put very, very accurate pedicles. Derotation forces can be used and you can reduce the amount of levels also in this. That's the beauty of uh, navigation and uh, the longer length of screws that really helps in derotation in deformities. In adult complex deformities, most of the time we feel just leave it. Why uh, should I operate? This is a very old deformity and this is not going to be better. I really can't give answer to this problem. Patient is in disabling pain. Uh, if you see the costopelvic angulation, there is a significant of uh, deformation. And if you see significant amount of deformity, 112 degrees, main thoracic curve, and this is what the clinical picture is. When you see this, you feel that I am going to have definite uh, problem. But now we use the uh, navigation as well as the neuromonitoring and these uh, surgeries can be well dealt with. Okay, we can deal it well. Again, all dysplastic uh, vertebrae, dysplastic pedicles, small pedicles, narrow pedicles, no pedicles, but we can actually put our screws well. We can derotate, we can do good osteotomies, we can see on table. It's a real time image and that's the beauty. And you can get th this lady never slept for 32 years in her life on her back and she was so happy in the second day post-op that she could sleep on her back for the first time in 32 years. That's what was her uh, experience and she was significantly better clinically. Again, a 16-year-old girl comes with a significant deformity, thoracolumbar spine, kyphosis, bonus compression and again, uh, you know, you think this is going to be a nightmare, we are not going to deal such deformities, there can be a neurogenic worsening or we, I will not be able to do this job well. But in such situations, these are the advantages which we have. The OAM navigation is like your big brother who is helping you, he is helping you. We have to analyze the CT scans well, you have to plan it well. And on table, again, as I mentioned that we really can put our screws well. We don't need to go medial, lateral, viscera because a lot of time vessels are there anterior to this and we, we can have a giveaway, we can have a you know, misbeat feeling when our screw go, uh, our uh, instrumentation can go anterior. That's not going to happen when we are using this navigation and we can do good amount of osteotomies, we can do PCRs, we can do everything and everything can be monitored and you can get uh, very good outcomes. Ankylosing spondylitis, again, this is an interesting case, 54-year-old man. This is how he was brought to the casualty and he was referred from a other big hospital to us. When we saw in the x-rays, you see lower cervical, there is something which is seen like a fracture dislocation. And if you see, there is not only fracture dislocation, but there is inferior migration of the complete uh, uh, cervical spine along with that and, and this was behaving like a complete rock if you see there is a severe amount of compression neck and uh, so the, the neck and head was behaving like one piece and the thoracic spine was behaving like one piece and again it's a very big challenge because we have done a couple of cases like this putting them in prone which is a very easy thing which people talk but it's it's very difficult because the patient is holding only on the neck muscles and the spinal cord because he was incomplete neurology, the minute you keep this patient prone, the very high chance of him becoming a complete paraplegic. And that's the reason we thought of keeping him in the same uh, place uh, like supine and uh, nasogastric intubation. All these things are important. We planned, we explained the risks and uh, we planned for anterior surgery and followed by a posterior. Again, uh, what challenges were there that this is how the clinical scenario this patient was brought in. You need a team for sure. You need experts, we need uh, uh, someone who is trained for doing the fiber optic intubations, uh, either a good anesthetist or a chest specialist is required and we kept this uh, patient in supine and this is what the position was. It's very, very challenging when it's a lower cervical, normal cervical also we have problems and this is a significant almost 45 degrees angulation to put any amount of implant or 
uh, uh, do your job and we were lucky it was a challenging one because we couldn't reduce and we were struggling then we did like a spondyloptosis reduction maneuver we reduced it over the cage and we put the plate we were quite happy on table if you see that there was reasonable amount of reduction uh, there was some amount of posterior uh, 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 lamina which was seen but generally we were very happy and we thought we will do the second stage it was almost six to eight hours uh, during this all procedure we were at two three o'clock from morning eight we planned for a second uh, stage uh, and as standard the patient started improving his power in all four limbs and when the patient was uh, happy and uh, for various reasons they uh, because they were taking opinions from here and there and uh, someone told okay, you can just be like this and uh, you will not need a second surgery despite of us telling this patient took discharge he went home we told that if you're going home you are going on your own risk come back and uh, plan for a second surgery but he comes back after six weeks and uh, before that there was again uh, what happened in the theater uh, in the post-op period was there was a csf leak we started coming after five days and uh, almost four to five hundred csf started draining it's always challenging that we can face this and the spine is fused the lumbar drain you have to check and we did <coughs> the ct there was a place where we could put our needle and lumbar drain helped and this patient was comfortable at 12 days uh, sutures were removed and at for uh, two weeks and he was sent home he comes back at two and a half months and this is what was seen Luckily, the, uh, the cage was holding rock solid. There was no motion, but the lower uh, uh, plate was coming out. We saw it in CT. There was no, no uh, structure, visceral structure, which was there, and we were okay. We told, you need surgery for this, uh, and that time they got convinced, and we planned for a posterior surgery in this. If you see, luckily, that cage was holding very, very strong and well. He was significantly better in terms of his neurology as in comparison to the post-op and this is the post-op where again it was a challenging uh, positioning for us and uh, again this uh, navigation in cervical spine is a beauty you can do cervical pedicle screws in whichever levels you want and it's a great help where you can have a very very safe zone you don't need to worry about vertebral or cord because you are seeing it on navigation before you are putting your screws you are reasonably safe when you are doing this kind of complex cases and we fixed a long segment for him and he's so far holding on well and uh, we are quite happy again uh, uh, last one two cases this is a 27 uh, year old angst bond there was an anderson's legion we used that and we corrected a deformity big advantage of uh, oarm navigation is again in osteoporotic spine we have published our paper of precious pedicle of around 170 pedicles where we uh, have 99.6 percent accuracy in osteoporotic spine because we are always worried uh, you can have breach of pedicle you can have problems and these cases you really uh, can do long screws you can, this is a lying down x-ray uh, but uh, if you see the accuracy is absolutely you can have long uh, screws you can have bicortical purchases and that's the beauty i don't like small screws for whatever reasons in general practice and if you see this lady is walking now you can go you can use the broken uh, vertebra with sclerosis as a stronghold for your cases and this is what is again uh, this was our paper which was published recently tumors again you can see on table how much tumor you resected how much is remaining and that's the beauty this was the osteoid which was not uh, understood by mri and it was uh, treated for four to six months by orthopedic surgeons and neurosurgeons as tb spine when we did a ct there was something looked like and it was a transforaminal tumor if you see here this is the tumor which is not it is interpedunculated it's not inside the body it was uh, coming out of the uh, vertebra and uh, we planned a navigated surgery you did, we did a unilateral exposure and we resected the tumor from there we could take it in toto and on table we can see the tumor was completely gone this is the osteoid which is come out and that's the beauty the patient was 95 percent pain relieved next day and there are various things uh, i'll just show a last case cervical spine again this patient comes with neck pain and he was treated for osteoporotic fracture he worsened with neurology and challenge is uh, that this looks like a tumor this is not an osteoporotic fracture we investigated and we planned in view of his neurology and we did a front and back surgery for him everything under navigation you can see amount of uh, 
clearance, the nerve, the spinal cord clearance, that's the beauty. And second stage, you fix from behind. Again, it's, it's a very, very uh, comfortable and very uh, soothing job when you do it under vision. And this patient is now with the oncologist. I think that's, that's the way in future we all will have to go towards the technology. We cannot say no that I, I am very, I'm a freehand surgeon. It will add up to your freehand practice. It will not make a bad surgeon good, but it will make a good surgeon better. And I think that's the way to go. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Thank you once again.